In today's video, I'm going to show you a dollar bin haul of some of Marvel's greatest comics, plus a long sought after key that allowed me to complete a run and accomplish a major collecting goal. Check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. Well, I'm going to start off by saying Happy New Year to all of you. New Year's Eve is just around the corner, and at least as I consider it, we're still in the thick of this holiday season. So I hope that you're all enjoying a very festive, fun, and safe holiday time with your family and friends. This is going to be the last video I make for 2022, and I think we're going out with a good one here. Uh, it's going to be a dollar haul from my favorite dollar bin diving spot in the area. It's called Pulp Comics and Games. They're located in Mankato, Minnesota, and I'll put links to their social media presence down below in case any of you are in the area and you want to check them out. But before we dive into the books, you may be wondering, hey, I'm still seeing Chris when normally he's just there for the first few seconds. Why is he still in front of the camera? Well, I'll tell you, there's two reasons. One is just because I wanted to change things up new year, new approach to things. I've been toying with getting back in front of the camera and kind of more talking to you face to face anyway. This seemed like a great time to do it. And then also, and probably more importantly, I could not show off this really cool shirt if I was behind the camera. This was a Christmas present to me from my wife. It's a Pulp Comics and Games shirt, obviously. And I'm super happy that she got this for me. They have a website that you can go on and you can choose the graphic, you can choose the color. And she got me two different shirts and two different colors. Super happy to have these. And if I weren't in front of the camera, I couldn't sit here and show off this cool shirt and uh, promote my favorite comic book store for back issue dollar bin diving. So that's why I'm in front of the camera. And so I'm going to sit here and we're going to talk and look at the books that I got from Pulp Comics and Games. Uh, You'll notice in the title that I said we were going to see Marvel's greatest comics, and that was not clickbait. It was not being um, specific about any particular issue, like actually showing you what was Marvel's greatest comics. I'm going to show you the title, Marvel's Greatest Comics. These books today, almost all the books I'm going to show you come from this title, and it was a super fun discovery because anytime you go to the dollar bins, I always go in there armed with my wish list and there's books that I'd like to find, but you're always open, or I'm always open to whatever I may find for a dollar. And on this particular occasion, they had several issues from this reprint title. This is one of, if not the first reprint title that Marvel started. It actually started issue number one back in like 1966. So you're talking Silver Age reprints of Silver Age books, which may seem funny at first, but when you think about it, it really makes sense because if you're buying comics in the 60s, the only place you're buying them is off of a newsstand. And once it's not new anymore and they have to make room for the new issues, where do those back issues go? They don't go to a comic book store in the dollar bins or any of the, you know, back issue bins and definitely not wall books. None of those things existed. And if you wanted to read these later, you can go online and look at it up on like Comixology or Marvel Unlimited. Once it's gone, it's gone. Unless you maybe had friends that had these issues and you could trade around so you could read some of those stories that you missed. So Marvel, very smartly, said, hey, let's reprint some of those very famous stories to help all our new readers get caught up, those folks who weren't there from the beginning. And when this particular title started, it was called Collector's Item Classics. And for the first 22 issues, it was a thicker, square-bound book that reprinted stories from a variety of titles in each issue. And even at this point, once it was retitled to Marvel's Greatest Comics, it still had issues from different titles in it. But at some point along the way, it switched and, bec and became exclusively a Fantastic Four reprint. So, um... Yeah, that's, that's the bulk of the books that I'm going to show you today. I kind of want to tell you what issue is reprinted in each of these. I'm not going to do it out loud for every one of them. I'll probably put words down on the screen so you can see all of those. I'll just highlight some of the ones that are keys as well. Because for me, 
I like the reprint titles. I, I find it to be a very much, a much more affordable way to acquire some of these really cool old Silver Age stories in single issue format, as opposed to buying the original Fantastic Four run. I'd never be able to afford those. So reprints, I'm very happy with. And these are in pretty beat up condition, but they're only a dollar. So Silver Age books, in some cases, reprinting Silver Age stories for just a dollar a piece. So I couldn't be happier, but let's go ahead and dive into these books here. Kicking it off, this is issue 24. This is actually only the second issue where it was called Marvel's Greatest Comics. And this one does still reprint issues from a variety of titles. It's got um, Fantastic Four 32, it's got Tales of Suspense 58, and it's got Strange Tales 133. Not all reprinted in their entirety, just some of the select stories. And I don't know actually if any of these are 100% reprints. Even in the later issues where it's just reprinting one Fantastic Four story, it might be a complete reprint, but it might be somewhat edited as well. If you know for sure any more about this title, let us all know down in the comments and we can uh, benefit from, from your knowledge there. But this one was the lowest number that I found, a great Jack Kirby cover. And that's another reason to have these too. The, the covers are fantastic. I don't know that all of them are actual covers that they reused from a Fantastic Four issue, but a lot of them are. So let's keep working our way through here. The next one is a key or reprints a key. This is issue number 33, and this reprints two issues of Fantastic Four, 44 and 45. So you get the first appearance of Gorgon and you get the first appearance of the Inhumans. I'd never be able to afford those in a first print format and single issue. So very happy to acquire that for just a dollar. The other thing I'll point out to you is that when I show you books, um, there's a part of me that wants to rebag and board these things before I show them to you because they would present a little bit better, but I kind of like showing you the books the way I found them. It might not look as nice, but it gives you a truer sense of how I found them in the wild. And these first two, for example, these are really, really thin plastic bags. They're definitely comic book bags because they're the correct size, but I don't know how long ago they made bags like this, not not in a long time. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd keep them in there because then you can see how I found them. I will rebag and board these though and they'll present a lot more. Um, so it'll, it'll help that appearance a lot more as I do that. All right, let's keep going here. We've got issue 34. And I think that reprints two issues of Fantastic Four. This next one I took out of the bag just so I could show you I think the cover is different, but this one here, issue 39, this reprints Fantastic Four 52, which is a key. This is the first appearance of Black Panther. So I can I don't know actually if, if that's the original splash page or if that's if that's been modified or pulled from a different part of the issue. But if you know, again, let us know down below. Yeah, you've got Black Panther, you've got the Inhumans. So happy to be able to add that to my collection for just a buck. Kind of chugging along here. Here's issue 47. That's the um, first mention of the Cree in that issue there. Here's 48. Get your first Ronin. Here's 49. That gives you the origin of him. And you got some significance there with the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And this next issue is actually the first one I saw and it really jumped out at me. It's such an iconic cover. But you've got issue 50, which reprints uh, Fantastic Four 67, the first appearance of him. Here's 51. Jumping ahead to 58. And we've got 64. And then one more fantastic cover, no pun intended. There's issue 68, great Dr. Doom on the cover there. So about 12 different issues that I was able to find from this series on this day of hunting. 
the series in total ran like 96, 98, 96 issues, somewhere in that range. And it's not easy to track what issues of Fantastic Four are reprinted in each one. I don't think it goes in order. It kind of jumps around, especially in some of these early issues. But I'm going to continue to hunt for these. If I can find more of these for just a dollar a piece, especially those lower numbers where you got some significant keys and first appearances, I will definitely keep my eye out for those and be very happy to add those to my collection. This way of collecting in the form of reprints is a method I've used for multiple different titles. And I've got one more that I'm going to tell you about, but I'm going to save that till the end because I got a really cool book to show you at the end of this haul. But let's go ahead and move these out of the way. Got a few more dollar books to show you. And this is another title that I wasn't looking for. I never even heard of it, but just stumbled across it in the dollar bins. They didn't have all of it, unfortunately. So that means I'll have to keep hunting, but that means I get to keep hunting. It's this title here, Nick Fury versus S.H.I.E.L.D. Don't know what's going on in the story. This was done back in 1988. You got a Jim Steranko cover on issue one. He does not do the interior pencils though. Um, artist name is Neary for the interior artwork. Issue two with a Bill Sienkiewicz cover. I will say they're all square bound though. You can see here on book three, I don't know if you can read that, but that's book three, square bound. It's a little bit thicker comic. There's number three. And sadly they didn't have issues four, five, or six. I'm happy to keep hunting for those. I really have no idea when or if ever I'll find them because I'd never seen this in the wild before today. And then there were the first three issues. So I'll keep hunting though. And if I can find four, five, and six, then I'll add those to my collection. For now though, very happy to have acquired these first three. Now that's it for the dollar books, but I have one more book I'm gonna show you and it wasn't a dollar book. This is the second time now in the last couple of months that I've done this. I don't generally pay more than a dollar or two for back issues, but of course there are exceptions. You know, I'm a run collector first and foremost. There are certain titles, runs, eras of books that I'm trying to collect. And as you get closer and closer to completing those runs, it, usually it's the keys that are the last holdouts, right? And they're the ones that cost more because you can't find them as commonly in the dollar bins or in 50 cent bins. And one of those instances for me was the title Uncanny X-Men. Back a month or two ago, I think I showed you one of two holes that I needed to fill to complete the run of Uncanny X-Men that I've been working on for several years now. And I showed you issue 164, first appearance of Carol Danvers as Binary. And I paid more for that issue than for any single issue comic to date. I spent like $16. And so for those of you unfamiliar with my channel, that gives you an idea of what I consider to be spendy on a book. My sweet spot for back issue collecting is dollar, $2 range. So 16 was a big upspend. But then not too long after, I did it again and got the second of those two holes that I needed to fill, and I got it even for less money. So while I was at Pulp, finished the dollar bins, and then I went over to the other half of the store where they have just their regular back issue selection, and I went looking for this last issue of Uncanny X-Men that I needed to complete my run, and they had it, and they had it at an amazing price. It is issue 158 that is tied for the second appearance of Rogue, and they had it for $10. So uh, maybe not amazing, right? It's not a hundred dollar book, but that's a good price for that book. And it's in really nice condition. So very happy to have scored that. Very happy to get it for $10. Still in the original bag from the store, but I will rebag and board this. I've got these earlier issues of Uncanny X-Men in my collection in Mylar at this point, but so happy to be able to share that with you. So happy to be able to add that to my collection. And the run that this allowed me to complete now is not the entire Uncanny X-Men run. That would be a massive uh, goal and accomplishment. For me, this represents that I now have completed every single issue from 143 all the way to the end of the run at 544. I started collecting Uncanny X-Men in like the high 220-something issues, like around 1987, 88 in that time frame. 
and then collected pretty much all the way through to 300 something after sometime like 96 or so uh, in 1996 after the Age of Apocalypse and then I dropped off. But then when I got back into the X-Men in like 2014, 2015, not only did I start reading new X-Men comics again, I went back and said, let me try to build out some of these runs from when I first started collecting. And one of those most significant runs was this Uncanny X-Men. And I didn't want everything at first. It started from like, oh, let me go from my earliest issue up to 350. And then it starts to grow a little bit lower on the low end and grow a little bit bigger on the high end. So it expands out on both ends. And a lot of those issues you can find in the dollar bins. So I was able to accumulate a lot of those pretty quickly. But then now we get down to the point where it was just those keys that were remaining. And I finally pulled the trigger, have all those issues now. And so I have you know everything basically from just after Days of Future Past till the end. Begs the question, will I go lower? And I will say yes, but I'll give you a conditional yes. And this is where we come back to the reprints. I have in a trade paperback collected edition, the Days of Future Past. So I've read that and, I, and I've got that. Those are spendy books. You go earlier than Days of Future Past and now you're talking John Byrne, Chris Claremont, early stuff with Dark Phoenix Saga, Giant Size X-Men, all those kind of things, super spendy books in there. Earlier than that, you got a lot of reprints. And even though they're reprints, they're still expensive. But then issues like what, one to 63 or so, those are all the, the original run of stories. Those are obviously very expensive. And so I'm not gonna try to get all of those in single issue format. What I will do though, for some of that, is go back to the reprint well again and get them in the form of classic X-Men. If you get the first like 45 issues of the classic X-Men title, you will have basically everything from giant size X-Men up to Days of Future Past with the exception of just a couple issues. And so that's how I'm gonna be collecting that portion of the run. And for things before that, I'm not really gonna worry about it. Uh, I have read them thankfully through Marvel Unlimited, read them online you know, a couple years ago. So feel pretty good about that. And I'm going to continue to focus on adding to my collection in the dollar books, but uh, very happy to have scored this book on this day of hunting. And I guess I'll say for the last time in 2022, that's going to do it for me. And that's going to wrap up this dollar bin haul from Pulp Comics and Games and this great key find and run completion issue that I was able to score. But how have things been going for you on the hunt recently? Any runs that you've completed of late or series that you're close to getting and maybe you've got a couple keys that you got to pull the trigger on in order to complete that run, let me know down below. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here, here, somewhere I'll put them on the screen for you to check out later. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.